This next section is what I call the lost principle. This is the eighth principle of natural law, which binds all of the other principles together. Okay, it is what I would call the encapsulating principle. Okay, it's the container inside which all the other principles fit very nicely and neatly. However, it's lost because we're not exercising it. See, we already looked at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven principles of natural law. And there they are represented by these circles overlapping each other, okay? Can anybody see an eighth circle anywhere? You got it, correct. Here's the eighth circle. And this might look familiar. You might have seen this somewhere. Okay? This, this pattern is called something. Does anybody know what this pattern is called? What is it? Not the flower of life. The seed of life. The seed of life. Okay? Now, what happens from a seed? It grows. It generates something. It creates something. A seed has an outer casing, an outer shell, okay? Then if you're gonna to get to the inner core of it that contains all of the creative, genetic, generative material, okay, that shell has to be there and intact. You break the shell of the seed, the creative essence of the seed is gonna be gone, okay? Now, what is that principle? Here's what that principle is. It's the eighth or what I call the lost principle. And it's the thing that has to be present in order for any change to manifest itself. And it is not what most people think of it as. Even when I tell you what this is, I guarantee you there will be a, an inaccurate connotative meaning for what people think this means, okay? Here's what the eighth principle is. It is known as the generative principle or the principle which governs creation which actually is the causal factor that goes into effect and generates the result that we say that we want. But what's the real term for it? Who can guess what the actual term, what the generative principle of creation actually is? No, it is not actual. It, okay, now most people will say it's love. I want to distinguish it from the concept of love even as I'm going to describe love in this presentation a little bit later on, okay? What is it? Procreation. No? What? Somebody said it. Somebody said something else. No? Who? Care. There it is. Okay? The generative principle is care. Now, this is different than compassion. People say, why don't you use the word compassion? Because that's not what I'm talking about. It is a different concept than compassion or even what I would describe as love. Care, and I mean care with a capital C, and here I didn't even put it with a capital C. I'm just putting it in all uppercase. All uppercase care. D distinguish this from care with a lowercase c, okay? This means what are you giving attention and helping to grow? What are you focusing upon? Because what focus you're focusing upon, that's what's ultimately getting generated, getting created, and growing. And this doesn't mean be ignorant of what's going on in the world and don't look at anything that's negative because you're going to feed that and give power to it. That's not what it means. Okay? That means you know what you're feeding? In that instance, if you want to do that, you're feeding ignorance. And that's what's going to grow. It's the exact opposite that the New Agers want you to believe that it is. By ignoring the negative, you are ensuring that more of it occurs. You are fueling it by ignorance, ensuring that it grows and takes over, okay? What care has to be looked at here as is, this is what you're giving your energy to. This is what you're focused upon. This is what you actually care enough about to do, to spend your time on, to put your attention on, to manifest in the world. That's what I'm talking about as care, okay? That's what generates our experience in the aggregate. 
most people don't care about what's really happening. Therefore, it is an impossibility for us in the aggregate to change the direction of energy, to change the direction of consciousness, and ultimately to get what we say we want. That's how the real law of attraction works, all right? Here's how it actually operates. The loss principle is the dynamic of care. What we care about on a day-to-day -day basis acts as the driving force of our thoughts and actions. Therefore, okay, since it's the, care is the driver of our thoughts and actions, it all, ultimately can be seen as the generator of the quality of our shared experience here on the earth. Care is what generates the whole thing. Hence, it has been called the generative principle. It's called the generative principle because that means to create. It comes from, the word generative comes from Latin. The verb genere, as we've already talked about, means to create. The generative principle is what we create through. What we care enough to put our will behind is ultimately what gets created or manifested in our world. The world is the way that it is because most people do not care enough, even if they say, they pay lip service, okay, and say that they want things to be different. They don't care enough to actually change it through their actions. This next section I call spiritual currency or spiritual currencies, all right? There's two spiritual currencies, time and attention. Now, look, we can readily see this, right? Time is money, people say. It's currency, right? What am I gonna spend my time on? What am I gonna pay attention to? Pay attention, you pay for something, you get something in return when you pay for something, right? That's what attention will get you here. It will get you something in return. You pay attention, you're gonna come out of here with a lot of understanding. There's two spiritual currencies, time and attention. This analogy can be very readily, can be seen very readily in the saying, spending time and paying attention. Whatever information or endeavors we put our time and attention toward, we end up getting something in return for that investment of these currencies. This is what real money is, folks. Real money. This will get you real money. One eye, moan eye. We end up getting something in return on what we put our investment of spiritual currencies toward. And you know what that, if it's put toward the right goals, the end result is true money. One eye, okay? True spiritual vision. The ability to see, to unoccult something and see it for what it really is. That's what comes from truly putting time and attention onto the right things. This return could come in the form of knowledge. It could come in the form of understanding. It could come in the form of skills, expertise, and, and empowerment. But only if we invest these two spiritual currencies wisely. And let me tell you something, folks. That's what, why most people don't have any money. They got nothing to pay for it with. See, you, you pay attention and you get money. You spend time and you get money. I'm talking about the real thing. So we have to invest our spiritual currencies wisely. We should seek to improve our quality of attention by placing it upon information that is capable of improving both ourselves and the human condition as a whole. Such an effort would also constitute a valuable investment of our time we should ask ourselves, what am I spending my time on? What am I spending my time doing? And what am I paying attention to? That's where you will find whether you're investing in real value, something that is truly valuable. If most of the time we're spending our time on nonsense and trivialities and you know divisive things and TV and sports and all other kinds of entertainment and distraction, well, you're gonna have a return on that investment and that return's gonna be low. It's not gonna result in much money, real money, okay? Most importantly, we need to ask ourselves, what kind of quality am I getting in return for my investments of time and money, a time and, and attention, I'm sorry, okay? These are the spiritual currencies, and that's what most people don't wanna give. They don't wanna give these freely for a return on investment. They don't wanna pay attention to the right things, they don't wanna spend time on the right things.